Welcome back. In this teaching video, I'm looking at 11.1 functions of time. 11.1 represents chapter 11, section 1 of the person A level mass applied mass year 1 textbook. Let's have a look at the key facts of this section, starting off with some important notation. We have that S represents displacement to V represents velocity. A represents acceleration and T represents time. Consider the following velocity time graph. Ladies and gents, the gradient of a velocity time graph represents acceleration. We have a linear graph, and so we have a constant gradient. This implies that there is a constant acceleration. Moving on to this velocity time graph. This time we have a curve, and so we have a variable gradient. This implies that we have a variable acceleration. So in chapter 11, we're going to be focusing on variable acceleration. These are the key facts of 11.1 functions of time. I'll be implementing these key facts within this exam style question. Let's have a look at an exam style question. A body moves in a straight line such that its velocity v meters per second at time t seconds is given by v equal 3t squared minus 10t plus 8 for t is greater than or equal to 0. t represents time so t cannot be negative, hence the restriction t is greater than or equal to 0. Find part a the initial velocity, part b the values of t when the body is instantaneously at rest, Part C, the values of T when the velocity is 5 meters per second. And Part D, the greatest speed of the body in the interval T is greater than or equal to 0, but less than or equal to 2. To better understand the question, I'm going to start by sketching the velocity time graph. Right, so I'm going to begin by working out the V-intercept. To find the V-intercept, I need to substitute T equals 0 into the V equation. So when I substitute T equals 0, I get V equal 8. Now, to work out the t-intercepts, I need to set v equals 0. So, if I set v equals 0, I get the quadratic equation 3t squared minus 10t plus 8 equal to 0. If I solve this, I get t equal 4 over 3, t equal 2. The coefficient of t squared is 3. It's a positive coefficient, so we have a u-shaped graph. So, now I'm going to sketch the graph. The vertical axis represents v in meters per second, and the horizontal axis represents t in seconds. So my graph will look something like this. My v-intercept is 8. My t-intercepts are 4 over 3 and 2. My turning point is as follows. To work out the t value of the turning point, I can add these two t values and then divide by 2. This gives me 5 over 3. Now I can substitute 5 over 3 into the velocity equation. And if I do this, I get minus 1 over 3. Okay, so the t value here is 5 over 3. And the v value over here is minus 1 over 3. So that there is my complete sketch of the velocity time graph. For the restriction, t is greater than or equal to 0. Now, part A of the question, I need to find the initial velocity. So the velocity when time t is equal 0. I've calculated this, it is v equal 8. So v equal 8 meters per second. Part B of the question, I want to work out the values of t when the body is instantaneously at rest. So when the body is at rest, we know that v is equal 0. So when v is equal 0, we get this quadratic equation. I've solved it and I've got t equal 4 over 3, t equal 2. So for part b, we've got t equal 4 over 3 and t equal 2 seconds. Part c, the values of t when the velocity is 5 meters per second. So in part c, we want v equal 5. This implies that we've got 3t squared minus 10t plus 8 equal to 5. Take the 5 to the left hand side. So we have 3t squared minus 10t plus 3 equal 0. I can solve this quadratic equation. So if I solve this, I get t equal a third and t equal 3. Okay, so we have t equal 1 over 3 seconds and we have t equal 3 seconds. Part D of the question, we want to find the greatest speed of the body in the interval t is greater than or equal to 0, but less than or equal to 2. Okay, so I'm going to sketch the part of the curve that represents this interval. 
So over here we've got zero, so we're going from zero to two. So it's this part of the curve, all the way up until that point there. So in that interval, we can see that the greatest speed is eight meters per second. So for part D of the question, we have that greatest speed in the interval t is greater than or equal to zero but less than or equal to two is eight meters per second that there completes the exam study question and this teaching video 11.1 functions of time if you found this teaching video useful please don't forget to subscribe leave a like leave a comment turn on your notification bell so that you receive notifications every time i post a new teaching video